I'm an actor, and that qualifies me to talk to you about social issues. And even though my opinion is controversial, I believe that racism is wrong. Now today, what I would like you to do is take a look at your skin color and hug somebody that has a different color skin. We can stop racism together one hug at a time. Definitely ask permission before you hug somebody. Thank you. Lights, vests, I'll be flectors. Please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please slow down and move over. Okay, we are back with you live this morning on the Private Officer Beat. We told you uh, the last time that we talked here on the POI radio about an incident in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where a security officer responded to um, a shooting. He was on community patrol. He got a call, a dispatch. He responded. He found three children shot. They died. Their mother also shot in the middle of the street. He was there about six minutes before law enforcement or any backup responded. And these are the type of calls that security are being involved in. Uh, just yesterday, a uh, security officer shot and killed a man in Oklahoma who tried to run him down with a vehicle. Uh, in Columbus, Ohio, within the last week, another security officer at an apartment complex shot a man and killed him. Uh, he said that the man was trying to run him down, that the security officer had responded to a domestic violence in progress and was able to get the woman, the victim, out of there. But in the meantime, uh, the male part of the situation got into his vehicle and tried to run the security officer down, and he was forced to use deadly force. Also this weekend, uh, Homestead, Florida, just outside of Miami in Miami-Dade County, armored truck security, uh, came under attack, heavily armed men, a shootout in broad daylight. Security was wounded, uh, but they were able to kill one of their armed attackers, and several others uh, got away, but one of them was also shot. Police later was able to uh, corral them up and get them into custody. This week in Las Vegas, Nevada, security officer a foot patrol found a headless man uh, behind a Walmart in the shopping center. Security officer just out doing routine work, finding a man from Oklahoma who had been killed and beheaded and dumped behind a Walmart. Another security officer in Arizona on patrol, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a man came up and began shooting at him. The security officer returned fire, striking the man. He was taken into custody. The security officer escaped injury. These are just some, some of the news titles, the news headlines of the week. This is not your grandpappy's security, as we've been saying for years. They're no longer guarding factories. They're no longer uh, sitting in some secured office out of harm's way. They are actually now out on the front line and this is something that employers just have to get in their head that it's no longer a safe job that it's no longer something that we can just put anybody out there to do it is dangerous i just got uh some information a few days ago from a friend of mine that on their campus 
two men came in and attempted to steal their ATM with a U-Haul. These are things that are happening every single day. And private security, nine times out of ten, are going to be the one who's going to be on the scene first, going to be the one confronting these people, going to be the one who's going to have to decide what to do and how to do it. Should they use force? Should they run? You know, as I've said many times, we, unlike law enforcement, do not have a duty to stand there and fight these people. If we're not prepared, we're not trained, or we're not armed, then we can flee. But we have to make a decision very quickly. Do we fight or do we flight? Do we flee? It's just the type of work that we're in. We're really in public safety. It doesn't matter if you're guard, badge, patch, security, guard, whatever it might be, we're really in public safety. We're protecting life and property. I think some companies have really come to grips with this. I think some contract security companies have finally said, we definitely have to do something about this. We definitely have to prepare our staff, our employees better. And they're trying. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with contract security, you're dealing, you're limited. You're dealing with just what the client is willing to pay for. Obviously, a company's not going to spend more than what they're being paid for. It's just not how business works. You've got to have profit. And I can tell you firsthand, having owned a security company for many years, the profit for small to mid-sized security companies just isn't there. They're not making millions. In fact, oftentimes, it's a struggle just to meet payroll week to week. So I don't blame security companies. I blame the clients for being naive and just um, not understanding really what security officers are faced with and why they have to be trained and equipped better. And it's really up to the security company to try to market that information. To kind of prove our point here, I do want to go over some of this information from the report that was released yesterday. As we all know, about 90 to 140 security officers die every year protecting others. That's a fact. It's a fact that many didn't know, many are still shocked about, but it's documented facts. Over the past 10 years, we have actually been able to establish that of those deaths, we can confirm and matter of fact report that 84.7% were from traumatic injuries, namely gunshot wounds, and sometimes multiple, multiple gunshots, stabbings, and blunt force assault. This is a huge percentage of private officers being killed on the job, not from some simple slip and fall, not because they had a car wreck in pursuit, not from a training accident, no. This is really quite different and opposite of the 140 plus law enforcement deaths that occur every year because according to safehome.org, which recently did a 10 year study of their own, they found that police officers died only 31% of the time from gunfire, 6.8% of the time from vehicle assaults, 23% uh, of the time from vehicle accidents, oftentimes they're in pursuit, and then the remainder of the deaths consist of things like illness, training accidents, and assaults. The other thing I really want for you, your employer, your partner, your co-workers to keep in mind is that during each incident when a law enforcement officer is injured or killed, and again, I can attest to it because I've worked in that field for many years, they have radio backup, they have partners, they've got a support team either with them or coming to their aid immediately. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about private security because most of the time when they're facing life-threatening injuries or attacks, they're alone. They have no communication other than a cell phone. They have no two-way radio. They can't call anybody and say, uh, 
you know, get me some help. A study over the last 10 years shows that 76.7% of all security officers actually died alone. And that 61 of those times a security officer was dead in a parking lot or at an office, a factory, or inside their vehicle, and even twice at the bottom of a lake where no one found them for hours and in several cases for days. Nobody missed them. Nobody didn't check on them. Nobody didn't call them on the radio for their hourly check. They were alone. Who knows? If you know, health had gotten there sooner, maybe they would have survived their injuries. We'll never know. But we do know this. They died alone. Private security and private law enforcement officers are almost never involved in vehicle pursuits. It's just against policy, and in some states it's against the law. They seldom have car accidents or situations where they fall ill or are injured in training related accidents because they <laughs> seldom do training, obviously. So most of the attacks are front line attacks where they're getting involved. They're in confrontations. They are addressing criminal violations, dangerous people, but they do it alone. Now there are a few cases where security officers every year get killed because of hazardous workplace situations like non-illuminated areas and climate weather, sometimes they fall, but those are few and far between to be honest. When you have over 80% of a workforce being killed by gunfire, stabbings, and blunt force trauma, and you do nothing, little to nothing, about making that a better situation for the employee, that's a problem. Many say that law enforcement actually is safer today than it has been for 30 years. I don't know if that's true. It doesn't seem like it's true. But I do know for a fact that the job of private security has changed so drastically that it really has become increasingly dangerous even to put a, a security officer in an office position. People today are so hostile Confrontations occur out of, out of nothing. One little wrong word, one little wrong look, and all of a sudden the person wants to uh, not only fight you, but they want to stab you or even shoot you. Because there's a lack of radio communication, most security work solo assignments. They have no immediate backup. You know, employers are unresponsive. They're not willing to say, oh, this is a dangerous job. We really need to do more to protect our people. Because they don't acknowledge it, really the security industry is destined, in my opinion, to surpass law enforcement deaths and injuries, like I said earlier, in a matter of just a few years. Workplace violence happens at least 100,000 times a year for private security. Now, most people, they don't want to believe it. They don't think that's true. 